Want to see my favorite pictures from JWST's second year? I've got those right here for you. It's hard to believe that JWST has been operational for two years. We got those first images on July 12th, 2022. And honestly, I will never forget the feeling when I first saw them. I was so overwhelmed and in awe of what this observatory could show us. The deep field was cool, they always are. But it was the Carina Nebula that really captured my imagination. I couldn't get enough of this photo. And JWST's Pillars of Creation? That's still my phone background, and I don't see myself changing it anytime soon. Over the last two years, we've gotten a ton of cool science out of the observatory. But sometimes, it's fun to take a step back from the science and just look at some gorgeous photos and be awed by the wonder of the universe around us. Though, because it's me, I am still going to tell you a little bit about the science of what we're seeing. I'm going to take you through seven of my favorite photos from JWST's second year. Let's start with JWST's second anniversary photo released on July 12th of this year. This is ARP 142, which is two galaxies, the Penguin and the Egg, or NGC 2936 and 2937. You can see why they've given these two distinctive galaxies those names. In the center is the Penguin, which is actually a distorted spiral galaxy. Because of the interaction with the elliptical galaxy, the egg, its spiral arms have actually unwound and the gas and dust were pulled in all directions. This interaction started anywhere from 25 million to 75 million years ago and it's produced new star formation about 100 to 200 stars per year. In contrast, the Milky Way produces about 6 to 7 new stars per year. You can see their interaction here at the top of the image. The egg appears much, much smaller than the penguin, but the two galaxies actually do have a similar mass. That's why their merger is going so slowly. If one was significantly less massive than the other, it would have been gobbled up more quickly. If you're curious what near-infrared versus mid-infrared looks like for this photo, the Space Telescope Science Institute was kind enough to provide us with both individually. These were combined to create the final image. But you can see here the near-infrared image. The glow of dust is really enhanced because remember, near-infrared enhances dust. And mid-infrared peers through it. Look at how different the egg appears in this photo. It just makes clear how much dust there is surrounding this galaxy. It's also super interesting to see the Hubble and JWST photos side by side. You can't see the structure as well in this Hubble image, which is visible light, but you can see this dust here obscuring the image. You can also see that dust in the JWST near and mid infrared images, but it's much more faint. One of the things I love about this photo is the amazing galaxies just hanging out in the bottom below these galaxies. Space is amazing, isn't it? Next. Okay, so this isn't a JWST image, but it is pretty cool. Brilliant is a sponsor of this video, and they help you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in everything from math to engineering to data analysis. They don't expect you to sit through lectures or presentations. The lessons are interactive and aim to build understanding from the ground up, which is a more effective way to learn than just memorizing things. It's a great way to build problem-solving skills, and this daily learning habit can help you grow personally and professionally. I've been enjoying the course How Technology Works, which helps explain the tech we use every day, from strong passwords to GPS, to help us understand the ins and outs of the tools we rely on. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off of an annual premium subscription. Now, back to the photos. This stunning image is two young energetic stars sending out jets called Herbig Harrow 4647, and it's located about 1,470 light years away. This picture is a composite of six images from JWST's near cam or near infrared camera, and the entire image is about 3.1 light years across. The stars that emitted these bright pinkish-orange jets are buried in the center of the image. 
It's hard to see them because they're kind of hidden behind dense gas and dust. They're only a few thousand years old, and the gas and dust immediately surrounding them continues to feed them as they grow. All active young stars are surrounded by a circumstellar disk like this, but the larger areas of gas and dust are from jets sent out from this pair of stars. Basically, as stars consume gas and dust and add to their mass, these young stars occasionally overeat and then basically burp out the excess mass to settle the star. Now this photo takes my breath away. This is the Crab Nebula located about 6,500 light years away, and the field of view here is about 10 light years across. This is a composite image taken in near and mid infrared. The red and orange areas that give the image structure are doubly ionized sulfur, while the ghostly white areas are synchrotron radiation, which is the radiation emitted when charged particles travel at high speeds along curved paths, in this case the magnetic field lines of the nebula. You can follow the sulfur and the wispy synchrotron radiation around to where there's a pulsar hiding in the center of the image. Cassiopeia A is the youngest supernova remnant that we know about. It was created by the explosion of a star just 340 years ago from our perspective. Cass A is actually 11,090 light years away, which means that this explosion really occurred 11,430 years ago and then it took 11,090 years to reach us. But for simplicity, the science community usually just talks about this stuff in terms of Earth's perspective. These are the near and mid infrared images side by side. The Miri image is on the right here. The fire looking red and orange in the Miri image is where the blast wave from the supernova is interacting with the surrounding gas and dust. This synchrotron radiation, which again looks ghostly white in the near infrared image. In the near infrared photo, you can see the inner shell of the supernova remnant in bright orange and pink. That's from the exploded star. It's extra bright because of the material it contains, oxygen, argon, neon, and other heavy elements. All in all, this remnant is about 10 light years across. This wide image of Uranus, if you laughed when I just said that, just please know that I laughed when I wrote the script. But this image of Uranus is actually one of my favorites to come out of JWST because it is just so simple and elegant. This photo to me is so clear and bright and Uranus has such distinctive rings in it that the first time I saw it, I wasn't even sure it was real. It's so incredible. Zooming in on the planet, the thing you're seeing shining on the planet is Uranus's north polar ice cap. And thanks to JWST's sensitivity, you can see Uranus's outer and inner rings. Zooming out scattered around Uranus are 14 of the planet's moons. The smears in the background are actually galaxies. Okay. Honestly, I could just pick 10 photos from this particular series of photos for this video and call it a day. If you haven't taken a minute to look through JWST's face on photos of spiral galaxies, drop what you're doing and go take a look. They are breathtaking. You can see millions of stars across these images. Closer into the center, thanks to NearCam, which is JWST's near infrared camera, you can see older bluish stars. That's what creates the blue glow near the center of these galaxies. In some of the images, you can also see diffraction spikes on the bright center of the galaxy. That's a good indication of an active supermassive black hole at the center, but they could also be bright central star clusters. MIRI, or JWST's mid-infrared instrument, is what shows us the amazing orange and red structure of these spiral galaxies. The bright stars you see, the red ones, are very young and still in their cocoons of dust. One thing that really helps you understand how remarkable these images are is when you look at them side by side with Hubble images, which are taken in visible and ultraviolet light. The difference both in terms of how they look and how sharp and detailed the JWST images are is staggering. I love it when an image sneaks up on you, and this is absolutely one of those. This is NGC 604, not even prominent enough to have a name, and yet Look at it, it's unreal. And I need you to understand the scale here. One of these little stars here is basically the size of our entire solar system. This is a star forming region located in the Triangulum Galaxy about 2.73 million light years away. 
The Triangulum Galaxy is one of our closest neighbor galaxies. The bright orange in this image is polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, while the deep red is molecular hydrogen. Ionized hydrogen is the ghostly white. And that is just about all the photos I have for you. I hope you enjoyed this quick tour of our universe thanks to these stunning JWST images. The great news is that we have a lot more to come from this amazing observatory. But for now, thanks for watching. I'm Swapna Krishna, and this is Ad Astra.